Hi, my name is Catherine, and today me and my three friends will be talking about the history of guiding. It all started when there were girls at a Boy Scout rally. These girls claimed to be Girl Scouts. You know, it was actually so interesting that we actually have a Boy Scout here it being interviewed by Ella. Well, Catherine, I'm wearing the 1988 guide's uniform. Okay, so Isaac, what is one thing that you do at Beavers? Uh, I play games and one of my favorites is dodgeball. Great answer. Now, what is your favorite thing that you do at Beavers? Uh, I'm, my favorite thing is doing scout camp. Another great answer. Is there a difference between guides and beavers? Yes, because guides is, is mostly girls and scouts is mostly boys. And the last question. When you get older, are you gonna do scouts? Yes. Thank you, Isaac, that was a great those are some in very interesting questions. Wow, Ella, that was really cool. Did you know it was so cool that Lord Baden-Powell actually made a sequel, but for girls? Caroline, can you tell us where it started and what, are you, and what you are wearing? Yes, Catherine, I can. <clears throat> I am wearing the 1920 guide's uniform, which was the first official guide's uniform ever. And today I will be talking about Canadian guiding. The first Canadian guide company was officially registered in January 1910 and was started by Mary Malcolmson in St. Catharines, Ontario. Other units were registered later in 1910 in Toronto, Moose Jaw, and Winnipeg. The first recorded Girl Guide camp in Canada was on the banks of Credit River in uh, Ontario in June of 1911. Girl Guides spread quickly to all provinces during 1910 and 1911. Newfoundland's first guide company was established in 1918. Thanks for having me, Catherine. That was amazing! Caroline, did you know that guides didn't even stay in Canada? Now, Rose, can you tell us where it spread to first? And sorry, I must ask, what are you wearing? I'm wearing the Girl Guide um, uniform from 1965. And first of all, I must tell you what WAG stands for. WAG stands for World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts. The very first World Center to, to open was our chalet in Switzerland. The second WAGS World Center to open was Our Cabana in Curvanavaca, Mexico. The third World Center is Saigami in, Saigam in India. And finally, Pax Lodge, the fourth World Center in London, UK. And that's all for me, Catherine. Thanks for having me. Well, that was all amazing, but sadly, we are out of time. So I guess it's time for goodbye. Hi and welcome to Cable 14. I am your host Ruth and we are speaking about endangered species. So guys, before we get into all this juicy information, let me tell you what an extinct, endangered, threatened, and expurgated mean. Extinct describes a species that no longer exists anywhere in the world. An expurgated species no longer exists in the wild in a specific region, but exists in the wild outside of that region. Endangered describes a species that is facing imminent extinction or exportation. Threatened describes a species that is likely to become endangered. So today on the show we have Anora. 
speaking to us about endangered species. So, Anora, could you tell us a bit about endangered species? The first thing I'm going to talk about is a Vancouver Island marmot. The Vancouver Island marmot is one of Canada's most endangered mammal. The next animal I'm going to talk about is a sea otter. A sea otter can live 15 to 20 years. Now let's talk about endangered plants in Canada. The first endangered plant I'm going to talk about is a butternut tree. Did you know that the butternut tree grows to about 21 meters and lives for around 75 years? The next plant I'm going to talk about is the eastern prickly pear cactus. The eastern prickly pear cactus can grow horizontal or upright. Now I'm going to talk about endangered animals from other countries. I'm talking about the Amur leopard. A male is 64 to 78 centimeter tall at shoulder. Now I'm going to talk about a common animal that's in danger. I'm talking about the tiger. The tiger is the eighth most endangered animal in the world. That was interesting, Anora. Now we have Lucy who knows about conservation officers. So, Lucy, what does a conservation officer do? Well, Ruth, conservation officers do many things to help protect wildlife. We also do teach courses about boating and snowmobiling safety and more. Could you tell us a few ways we can help? My pleasure. If you ever find some garbage on the ground, be sure to pick it up because a little thing like that can make a big difference. Some other ways are try to be careful around plants, animals, and also don't feed an wild animals. Here's some, some, oh. Here's some animal gifts to, as a thank you for joining us on the show. Today, we, I've learned a lot about endangered species, and I hope all our viewers have learned a lot about endangered species. Also, a great big thanks to all our guests for joining us today. I'm with Telus. Goodbye.